Hey everyone, John Henry here from Slingshot Futures Trading Group. Today we're going to be taking a look at our weekly future stocks and Forex outlook. This time around, it's going to be for the week of 719. Before we do that though, uh, as far as the signals from last week, the ones that I was looking for at least, the MES target was filled, the NASDAQ, there wasn't a trade necessarily last week, we were more so looking for the bear correction uh, to the bottom of the channel, which it did. Uh, we were also looking on a setup for gold fading the range highs, but there really was kind of a situation of looking for more proof that worked out as well. Uh, from the stock side of things, all of the targets were filled, Twitter, Facebook, and Snap. And along that, uh, we also have a couple situations that are relatively interesting uh, when you look at Twitter and Snap and a few others. Uh, so Twitter, we were looking at a long on a pullback on Twitter. Uh, and that allowed that long right inside here. It's working beautifully. And actually, uh, if you were trading it the very next day, that was Monday, uh, you would have seen that that move actually fired off immediately into the target area, basically right after. So this might be a completed trade already, but uh, looking at this, and the same situation is happening on Snap as well, uh, but they had that really, really strong bear breakdown and nothing, right? No follow through, no continuation, nothing but a trap where it popped back up came back down, held a break even, and then popped higher again. The same thing is happening on Snap, which is allowing buyers to come back in, and potentially looking for new highs on both of those. And then on the Forex side of things, we have the Euro USD, which filled the target. The dollar yen, we are looking at fading the highs of a previous bear move down. That worked out perfectly. And the dollar CAD also had its target filled. So uh, without all uh, or with all of that out of the way, let's dig into the week ahead. Uh, so the S&P is still, man, uh, it's still very very sideways choppy sloppy consolidated there's not a ton of stuff going on right now uh it's trying to migrate its way up towards a possible channel low but the highs are way up there this is more likely than anything else is just transitioning into a range there's not really anything else going on here that said just like we were talking about on twitter and snap a second ago we have a very similar situation that is firing off here now where the sellers tried coming in and they got just dunked and more importantly than that, because of that weird gap in the middle of the week, that left them in the dust. They haven't even had a chance to get out yet. Uh, so a pullback into that area is still definitely valid uh, right around that 83 quarter area. It's sort of the same type of situation we were looking at before, uh, just a little bit later, kind of a, a rinse and repeat. So sellers are trapped. We know they're trapped. We have a very, very strong rally to the upside. Sellers are just hoping, please let me out, right? Uh, and if we can get a dip back down into the first or second buy zone, that's going to be the area of major interest. And honestly, a lot of eyeballs on that support hovering around there. Might have to deal with the break-evens, though. That's why their entries are a little bit higher. Upside objectives, though, 32, 23, 75 or more. Uh, still bullish market, still rallying higher. And as crazy as it seems, right, we're almost back up to the highs uh, on, on the S&P. Don't have a whole lot more to go. So a couple hundred points, and, uh, and we'll be there. So... Definitely interesting looking for longs on the S&P. Switching over to the NASDAQ. Now the NASDAQ, uh, we were talking about how there wasn't a trade last week. We were actually looking for the market to pull back and give us a reason, right? We were coming off the highs of the channel. They finally cycled lower. Now that we have a cycle lower, this is offering up an area for buyers to try to come back in and push the market higher once again. The big thing that I really want to see here uh, is more of a secondary push. Again, similar situation, not surprisingly, given that it's the NASDAQ, but uh, Twitter and Snap and, and a lot of tech stocks are having this very similar situation where you have that big bear bar down, sellers tried breaking lower, they failed, came back up, they used that opportunity to get out of break even, and now it's rotating higher. Buyers are going to be buying this, looking for a continuation up. The only caveat to that is that Sunday open, depending on where that opens, might throw it off a little bit. Uh, but I am looking for an upside continuation towards 829 quarter. I mean, realistically, 11,000 is right there. Gigantic psychological level. Uh, obviously, there was a lot of rejection there, but I would like to see that market come back into alignment. Uh, with that 11,000. And then over on the Dow, switching gears a little bit away from gold because it's still kind of a mess. Uh, over on the Dow, we have a nice continuation play to the upside. We had a, that, again, that funky gap in the middle of the week that threw things off, but we have bears that are trapped heavily, right? Very heavily trapped bears. 
and then we had upside continuation on a gap. Uh, yes, they did come into that previous swing high, and it's possible that sellers are trying to push back against it. So this one isn't as primo as some of the others, but given the context, there's still a reason to believe that they should be able to get a bounce back up to at least 26,832 maybe a little bit further above that 27,000. And again, I know it's kind of hard to believe, but the Dow, eh, they've got a little more room to go, but we're, you know, about a third of a way all the way back up to the, towards those all-time highs. Crazy, crazy movement. Uh, so the Dow's got a little bit of work to do. NASDAQ's obviously already there at all-time highs. All right, so the first one on the list here is going to be Johnson & Johnson, J-N-J, -J, Juliet, Nancy, Juliet, or November, Juliet. Sorry, I have a, an aunt named Nancy, and I just can't get that out of my head. <laughs> it's always Nancy to me. Uh, anyway, Johnson & Johnson is setting up with a very nice bullish lift to the upside, and it's a, I mean, given the situation that we're in, this is screaming bull flag. Uh, so we have a nice pullback move down, right, holding absolutely perfect structure uh, for a flag. We have that nice flag pullback, and now we're starting to dip back a little bit lower. Now, obviously, I don't necessarily want to buy way the heck up here, which is why this is on watch. Uh, but what, what I, I mean, honestly, the best situation that we could get right now is a big bear bar down, getting back in towards the bottom of that bull bar, get into some of this previous structure, and get back towards the moving average and bottom, of, or the, well, I guess technically that's the top of the channel, but retesting the top of the channel as a bottom, and we could potentially have ourselves one heck of a setup. So that is going to be what I'm looking for on Johnson & Johnson. It's not necessarily setting up anything per se right this second, but uh, given that I only do this once a week, if we can get a washout on Monday or even just a pause on Monday and a washout on Tuesday, just a nice dip down, uh, and then we start digging into some potential longer-term buying areas. And Johnson & Johnson is definitely a stock longer-term traders are going to have their eyes on uh, to potentially try to hold on to dividends and all of that fun stuff. Going on to the next one. Uh, Procter & Gamble, PG, Papa Golf, looking for more bullish continuation here as well. Uh, PG has a couple different things that are setting up. Obviously, this is a monster breakaway move, right? So when we have this situation where the sellers tried putting in a top, the buyers tried defending it, and then it almost looked like the buyers lost their grip, but the sellers never triggered in underneath those lows and went inside bull bar and shut those sellers down. And you can see they went frantic at the highs, like, no, please, no, right? Sell more, sell more, try to get out. And, well, it ran them over. So knowing that sellers got absolutely obliterated, uh, what I would love to see here is a quick little snap back towards just underneath 125. You might have to settle with 125, but I like 124.82 all the way down to 121.58. We've got a pretty big range here, but realistically, this upper buy zone is going to be a little bit of a hot spot uh, for a target up towards those 126s. Not a huge move by any means uh, because, well, you're talking Procter & Gamble. It's not like it's a giant mover by, <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, whenever there's that type of situation where the market itself doesn't necessarily move, if there's enough volatility, that could also potentially open up some option plays, depending on what the implied volatility is uh, at the time. And if we can get some action going into this week, that could kick up pretty quick. Uh, another one that I really, really like, PBCT. Papa Bravo Charlie Tango. Uh, this is People's United Bank. And one of the biggest reasons, uh, if you've been around for a while, you've heard me talking about PBCT many, 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 many times. Okay. Many times. I love PBCT. It's got a fantastic dividend. It's got a long-term dividend hold potential. They pay a phenomenal rate and they've been paying dividends for ages uh, with high consistency. So I love PBCT for a long-term hold. Uh, it's setting up a buy zone at 1136. The target's 1157. Uh, so obviously a 20 cent move, you know, <laughs> not, not that big of a deal here. Uh, but when we're looking at it from the perspective of longer term holding here, you can see we're in towards that bottom third of the range. And if the market is going to rotate higher and stay above 10, uh, anywhere from realistically where we are now, sub 12, all the way down to almost $9 is a potential longer term buying zone. Uh, but I'm looking for a continuation play for a good 20, 30 cents to the upside. And if they want to break out and run, top of the range is going to be up there at around 350. So we'll keep our eyes on that one. But boy, do I love PBCT for a long run, uh, for a hold especially. We'll see if they can get that little pop come Monday, though. Uh, over on the Euro USD, the Euro is grinding its way higher, and it's having a little bit of trouble. Last week, we had a long uh, 
that we were talking about a potential setup that worked out beautifully, and it's just kind of kept going from there. It hasn't really pulled back. There's not much else to do right now other than just ride out the previous long or wait. Uh, the big thing that's happening right now appears as though almost like a cup and handle. Right now, this this isn't. <laughs> that's a very small handle. Usually, you want to see a cup and a handle, right? A, a real handle, uh, and that might be what this is going to need to kind of reset the mojo for the upside, right? They tried breaking out of the highs, but that's not been doing so well yet. Uh, you know, a little bit later today when the markets open at 6 p.m. Eastern, then you know maybe we gap up and it just runs up to that 1.15. But realistically, from a cup and handle perspective, I would love to see a little bit of a snapback, dig back into that previous massive structure, and then we've got ourselves a possible situation to keep this thing going. I do really like the way that the EURUSD is setting up, but I will not be buying this high up. Uh, I'm not a high buyer looking for it to break out. That's not my shtick. Uh, I want to buy pullbacks. I want to buy cheap, or at least when I perceive it to be cheap. And <laughs> it's not there yet. We've got some pullback to have uh, happen first. Over on the dollar yen, the dollar yen, again, we were talking about fading the highs of that previous bear bar the last time around, and that worked out beautifully. Uh, but the big thing that's setting up here is we're in a situation now where the sellers, they're not really proving much, but the buyers really aren't proving much. We're very, very consolidated. Zooming out and looking at the big picture here, um, it's not really a surprise to see why we're consolidated. This area is a train wreck. Uh, there is a lot, a lot of support here. And if the buyers can maintain this support, there is a great potential of an upside rally. But before that even happens, even comes close to happening, we're going to have to break down some of this previous resistance first. Uh, so we've got a long way to go. I love this flush through the lows, and I love the V bottom that they put in there for a higher low reversal. Everything is looking really good for a potential longer term hold on the dollar yen. But... Right now, where we are is extraordinarily consolidated and it is messy in here. So we've got to be very careful. If anything, I'm approaching the dollar yen coming into this week as a range. Looking to buy low obviously is more the incentive. I would rather be a long-term buyer where we are in the bigger picture, but uh, buying dips down into that 106.08 area or potentially even selling rips up to 107.90, just looking to kind of play the range back and forth for now until we get some decisive movement. And then finally, the dollar CAD. Uh, the dollar CAD, that was another one that we were talking about last week that worked out beautifully. But, um, well, actually, this one was a little bit kind of hazy, right? That was that breakdown that, that didn't really want to go initially and got a little bit herky jerky. Uh, and it still really hasn't changed. We're still stuck inside that range. It's not really doing a whole lot. The one big thing of consideration here is the market kind of broke away, uh, leaving this wide open gap. Uh, now, if you're not familiar with this type of gap, go back in the videos that we uploaded. I think it was about uh, maybe a week or two ago now, uh, but it goes over WRB, wide range bodies and hidden gaps. This is one of those hidden gaps. Initially, that gap would have been here but the market filled it in a little bit and then filled it in a little bit more. So that gap has now decreased to this, but it's still open, right? It's still an open gap, which means that we have upside objectives, which are still waiting. The problem is they filled it in so much that the upside is basically just back to the range highs. <laughs> so if the buyers are going to take it, they're going to need to do it soon. And looking at the bigger picture, this is the zone where if they are, they're probably going to do it, right? Previous support and resistance, we're right back inside there. This is a big do or die zone. We came back, we filled that gigantic gap that they left behind, maybe a flush to retest, and then a bounce out of that would be optimal. But where we are right now, very range bound, very consolidated. We're going to have to wait for better prices, buy low, sell high, and stay the heck out of the middle. Um, just the way it is. So that's going to be the outlook going into this week. Uh, a lot of really cool and exciting things going on uh, as far as just everything uh, with the markets. I mean, man, so many different opportunities and this volatility is nuts. Um, but as always, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email, jhb at ssftg.com. Uh, otherwise, though, enjoy the, uh, the rest of the week. I hope you had a fantastic weekend so far. And for you members, we'll probably see you later in the chat room uh, to see if anything wants to set up for us. Have a good one, and we'll talk to you all later. Thanks. Bye.